Hello, thank you for joining me today on this tutorial of the Bundle 4G series. To start off, you will need to plug in your display using the provided power cord. Next, you will have to turn on the display using the power button. You will notice a couple buttons on the front of your screen. These buttons are used to help you navigate your screen. They include the home button, which takes you to the Android screen, the back button, which takes you back a page or retracts your keyboard, your settings button, which takes you to the settings of the screen, and the volume up and down button to easily adjust the volume of your screen. Lastly, you also have your power button Tap the power button once, and this turns off the backlight of your monitor. Tap it on again, and it turns your screen back on. If you click and hold this button, it will turn off your display. When you turn off your display, your light will illuminate red. When the board is turned on for the first time, you will have to go through a series of prompts that helps you set up the Wi-Fi, language, and time zone. This board has already been set up. If you need to change the Wi-Fi settings, you can go to the settings menu. Over here, you can select your Wi-Fi network. I recommend that you check for any software updates to make sure your screen is on the latest software. If there are any updates, you will be prompted to update. We have provided an on-screen guide to walk through the basic functions of the screen, such as customizing the screen prompt, overlay annotation, accessing your bottom menu bar, renaming your source inputs, and also where to find training videos. The board has a lot of cool features, however, the best feature yet is connecting any computer to the screen for a more powerful interactive experience. The screen has three HDMI ports, a VGA port, a DP port, and this allows you to connect any computer to it, whether it's a Mac, Windows, or Chromebook. The computer I have in front of me is a HDMI output computer. Using HDMI cables, I can connect my computer directly to the display. Now it's time to gain touch access through using your USB cable. In this cable, one side is a square, one side is a normal USB cable. Now that you have full control over your computer from the screen, you can pull up any PowerPoint lessons or even interactive game right through the bundle board. With the included remote, you can select the freeze button to freeze your screen for the viewers and access documents on your computer without the viewer seeing what is actually on your computer. When you're ready to unfreeze and show a new document, click the freeze button again. If you have an HDMI output or VGA output docking camera, you can connect that directly to the display through utilizing the HDMI and VGA inputs of the display. This camera is connected to the back of the display through the HDMI input, and you can see that the input has a green light. I renamed this input to make it easier for me. Select it and you have access to your document camera. You can use the on-screen annotation features to highlight different parts of your document camera. If you have a USB document camera, 
You can plug the USB document camera directly into the display. The panel has USB inputs in the back and also in the front. To access your USB document and camera, go to Apps and click on your camera app. Now you can access your document camera directly on the screen. Notice the home page has input names. You can change these input names to reflect the device you have plugged in. Right now, this is my guest computer. In your home screen, you have the ability to focus your audience by typing in what your main focus is. In your settings, there are a couple items that I wanted to point out. Number one is you can change your wallpaper. Select wallpaper, select your local, or you can select your USB drive if you have one available. If you have a picture on your device, you can access it. I have one downloaded. Select the photo and it's your background. Another way to change the background of your screen is by accessing your photos. Selecting the photo. And selecting, and selecting the icon down here. Additional options that you can configure is your screensaver. If you want to select a screensaver, you can also go to your files and find a photo. You can also select an eco setting, which is the amount of time it takes for your board to turn black after not being in use. You can also select a background for the inputs that don't have anything plugged into them. You can select a countdown watch. and you can turn it on by selecting the switch. It will appear on your screen. This settings menu is also where you go to change the password of your display or to add the password of your display. And also select if you want to lock your screen when you boot up your screen. This means when you turn on your screen, it automatically locks the screen. For your power settings, a very useful tool to have is programming the ability to shut off the screen. You can, you can select what days and what time you want to shut off your screen. That means every day at 6 p.m. my screen will shut off. Now I don't have to worry about forgetting to turn off my screen. If you are on any input or any screen, you can always swipe up and this menu will appear. This makes it easy to navigate your screen. In this menu, you have access to the following. 
starting off with settings. This includes your Wi-Fi, your time zone, additional settings, power settings, and information of your display. Tasks, which pulls up any running applications. The Get Started menu, which walks you through basic functions of the display. The Onboard Browser, for your Android and your browser, and to access any documents on your Google Drive. The Apps, which gives you access to some quick tools for your device. Our screencasting software, which allows you to cast up to four different devices, whether it's Android, Chrome, Mac, or Windows, right onto the display. Inputs, files, to access any files you have saved on the screen, or to access a USB drive. Lastly, your back button and the home button and the lock feature, which locks your screen when you don't want anyone to access your screen. Take advantage of quick annotation features over any document by selecting the side arrows. When you're ready to save the document, you can click on the Save button and choose where to save the file, whether it's on your bundle board or onto the USB drive. You can also screenshot using the side arrow button. The remote control also has a screenshot button. The screen even has a spotlight mode. To access more whiteboard features, access the whiteboarding app. Here, you can select your background, set your double-sided pen colors. You have an option for thin pen and thick pen. You can easily erase with your palm, or you can select for precision erase by selecting precise erase. You have a calligraphy pen mode. You have the option for a single point gesture, which allows you to write with a single point and also utilize gesture control. You have the option of multiple touch points. And this allows you to have multiple people write on the display at the same time. You have a button for more options, which allows you to utilize things such as screen cover up or importing photos. You can use the next button to select the image, duplicate it. You also have the option to do split screen writing. This gives you the option for having multiple people come up to the display and select different colors.
you have an undo redo button, an erase all button, and you have the ability to add pages and switch between pages. You can review all your pages by clicking on the bottom right and selecting a specific page. When you're ready to save your document, you can go to the bottom left of your screen. You can export and import notes in different file formats, and you can also upload your document right onto a cloud drive. This gives you op the option to upload your file directly onto Google Drive or OneDrive. You can access plenty of your saved documents in your files manager. Anything that you save in your whiteboard app gets saved into the whiteboard folder. Any screenshots get saved into the pictures folder under screenshots. You can also access your USB drive from this page. You can plug in your USB drive through the front ports or the back ports. You see a pop up on the side menu. You can move files directly onto the board by selecting, copying, and pasting the file. If you want to access a file on your USB drive, all you have to do is open the file. You can display different type of file formats, such as PDF, image files, videos, and much more. And you can even write on it with the on-screen whiteboarding app. To create new folders, select New Folder and enter a folder name. You will see your new folder right on screen. If you want to upload your file onto the cloud, you can do it right from the file manager. All you have to do is click on the photo, select upload, and again, you have the option to upload it onto Google Drive or OneDrive. If at any time you want to take a screenshot and you want it saved onto your USB drive, all you have to do is select screenshot. Now you can open it up in your USB drive. Click on files, disk drive, pictures, and your file is right here. Cleaning the interactive screen is easy. All you need is a microfiber cloth, or you can use a cotton cloth, or even a paper towel and glass cleaner. You can also use isopropyl alcohol. When cleaning the device, make sure to turn off the display. First, spray your cloth and wipe down the screen. Well, that concludes my tutorial on the Bundle Board G series. If you have any questions, feel free to visit our website at www.como.com or send us an email at hello at como.com. Have a great day.